In the previous application, we talked about how to create a new application using Spring Boot. Since every good application needs to have a proper logging in place, in this video we will talk about how to configure logback for our application. We want to log messages into two places. The first place is the console and the second place will be a file. We also want logback to take care of the archiving of our files so we can take a look in the future what happened in our application. So let's start by creating a logger in our main class, the library application. We can see that we already have a few logger classes available. It's because logback is coming out of the box from Spring Boot, so we do not need to add any new dependencies. Let's use the logger class from the package org.slf4j. Now we want to create a new instance of this logger. To create a new instance of the logger, we will use the logger factory from the org slf4j package. The logger factory has a method called getLogger, which takes a class as an argument. The name of this class is used as the name of the logger. So let's use the library application.class so we know that the logger within the library application class was logging the message. Now, since we have a logger in place within this class, let's use this logger instead of the system out print line here. Log info. Hello world. On this line of code, we are logging the hello world message as an info. Let's try this out by running the application. We can see the hello world log message here. So it's working. But this is only in console. We also want to log into a file. For this, we need to do some configuration of the logback. The configuration for logback are done using a file called logback.xml. This file should be stored in the resources folder from there, the logback can pick it up. So let's create the file logback.xml. This XML file has a configuration element as a root. Within this file, we need to configure the appenders, which are responsible for publishing the log messages into different destinations, and the loggers, which are responsible for collecting the messages. So let's start with creating the appender for publishing the messages into the console. For this, I will create an appender root element. This appender needs to have a name so we can reference it. Since it's publishing into the console, let's name it console. The appender also has to have a class which says what type of appender it is. We want to publish to console and for this we will use the console appender from package. And here we have the console appender. Now as we created the appender, we also have to configure this appender by saying how the message in this output should look like. For this we create an encoder element and within the encoder element we set the pattern of the message. To make it faster let me quickly copy a sample pattern here. Let's take a look into this pattern. This is how the message in the console will look like. 
The first part here says that at first we are printing the date and time when the message was logged. Here we have the years, the month, the date, then the space, then here we have the hours, minutes and seconds. The second part says the thread from where the logger was used. The third part contains the logging level, whether it's an info, debug, warning, error. Then we have the logger name. Then we have a message and a new line at the end. Now we have the console appender ready, but we need to assign this appender into some logger. There is a so-called root logger. Under this root logger belongs all the loggers. So if we assign the console appender to this root logger, we know that all the loggers will print into this appender. So let's do this root and assign it, assign the console appender using the appender ref element. This reference name here has to be the same as the appender name. Also, we want to say what type of log messages we want to receive, what level of the log message. So this can be configured using the level. And we want to log messages in debug and below. This means we will log the debug, the info, the warning, etc. Now our configuration file is ready. So let's try it. We expect a difference in what messages we have logged. In the previous start, we seen that we have only info messages. Now we configure the root logger to log also debug messages. So we want to see the debug messages between these info messages. Let's start the application. And the application built successfully, executed successfully. Let's see the log messages. Here we have the hello world info message, but we can also see the debug messages. This means that the configuration is correct. So we can print the log messages into the console now, but we also want to print the log messages into a file. For this, we need to create a new appender, which will print to the file. And let's do this. Let's name this appender as a rolling file, because we also want to roll it when some time is reached or some size is reached. This means that, for example, when we run the application the next day, we will create a new log file and the old log file will be archived. So for this purpose, we need to use an appender class called rolling file appender. It's located in the same package And here we have it, rolling file appender. Now, this appender has a bit more configuration than the console configuration, because we also need to say, for example, where the file will be located. So let's configure the file 
where the log will be published to. We want to use a file called application.log and we want this file to be located in the root of this project in the logs folder. Okay. Now we also need to configure how the log messages should look like within this file. And actually it can look the same as in the console. So let's just copy this encoder part here. Now we have a code duplication because we see that the pattern is the same. So let's introduce a property which will store this pattern and so we can avoid the duplication. Let's copy the pattern here and we have the property. So instead of having the same pattern here and here, we will have it only here as a value stored in the log pattern property and we can reference this log pattern property within our console appender and also within our rolling file appender like this. Okay. Now we created the rolling file appender, but we also need to include the this appender to the root locker by adding the rolling file name as a reference. And then there is one last thing we need to do and it's to configure how we want to roll these files. It means when and where we want to create the archive. We can configure this by setting rolling policies. And for rolling policy, we will use a class called size and time based rolling policy. So let's use it. This means that we will roll based on size and time. Now, where we want to store the archive files. We configure it within the file name pattern. So we want to store them within the log folder we use also for the logs. and within a subdirectory called archive. And here we specify the name of the archive file. So let's call it application.log. Let's call it application. And then we specify the date month and day sorry year month and day dot log dot zip this pattern here does more than just saying the name this pattern here also says how we want to archive so by this suffix dot zip 
we say that we want to create a zip file which will contain the log file. And here, by this date, we are saying how often we want to archive. By specifying here the day, we say that every day we want to archive the last log files and start logging into a new file. But we also want to archive based on size. So what if we reach the maximum allowed size earlier than the day finish? Then we need to archive, but we need to have an extra information which will identify this earlier archive. And this extra information can be done by percentage %e. It's an increasing number which says which archive of this day is this file. So this will be the file pattern name. Okay, it's located in the logs directory under the archive subdirectory. Its name starts with the application prefix. It's rolling every day. When we need to do more rollings during one day, it's incrementing its number. And this file has a log.zip suffix. So it will be a zip file. Now we need to set a few more settings because it's not just a time-based rolling policy, but it's also a size-based rolling policy. So we need to say how big a log file can be the upper boundary. We can say this by the max file size element. We want to have our log files maximum 10 megabytes big. And we also can add some upper boundary, how many log files back we want to keep. So log back will do the cleaning for us. So we want to keep the maximum history of 100 files. And that's it for the rolling file configuration. Let's try it now. I'm running the application and let's see what happens. The application finished. We have the logs in the console, but we can see that we also created a logs directory. And this logs directory has an application log file where we have the logs. Now, I want to show you also how this archiving looks like. So let me update the max file size to 10 kilobytes instead of 10 megabytes. This means that when the application log file reaches the 10 kilobytes size, we will archive it and create a new application log file for the new logs. So let's start the application. And as we can see, we have the archive directory and there's a zip file within this archive directory. The zip file is called application. It's the log from date 2022, the December of 26. And it's the increment number of zero. So, so it's the first zip file from this day. And then we have a new log file created. So the logging of our application is in place. We are logging into a file. We are logging into a console. And that's it for the today's video.